Hey guys, welcome back for another Razer Chroma keyboard lighting design video. I'm Unreal Hero and I'm here to show you guys step by step how to make Razer keyboard lighting designs. For this video's Razer Chroma profile, I decided to respond to a comment that was made to me on my Discord channel. And the comment comes from Johnny Cap. And Johnny says, hey, I saw a keyboard design on a vid that looks really clean. If I send you that vid, can you try to recreate it? Here is the video that Johnny Cap sent me. So as you can see from the video clip, it looks kind of like a rainfall design, but with some rainbow colors in it. So for this design, I'm going to call this one Rainbow Fall. This design will be available for you guys to download on your Razer Synapse 3 compatible keyboards. A link will be in the description where you can go to download that. I'm also going to show you in this video how I made it step by step. If you guys want to see what the design looks like, at the end of the video I will have a showcase clip where you guys can see what this design looks like in person. Thank you Johnny Cap for the request and thank you for the challenge. Without further ado, we're going to get right into this design. Here is Rainbow Fall. All right guys, to start creating this Rainbow Fall design, what we're going to start off doing is we're going to make sure that we're in the Studio tab here in Razer Synapse and we're going to click on these three dots on the top middle and we're going to click Add. This is going to create a brand new profile for you to start from scratch. And right off the bat, we're gonna click these three dots again and we're gonna rename this file to the name of our profile. So in this scenario, it's going to be Rainbow Fall. All right, so now that we have our profile renamed, we're going to begin applying some effects on there. All brand new Chroma profiles start with the spectrum cycling layer. To take this effect off, just double click any of the affected keys and you can hit the delete key that will remove the effects from all of your devices and then you hit save. Now for this first step, I'm just going to start with like a base lighting just to kind of backlight all of my keys. Now if you're a person who is okay with having dark pitch black keys on your keyboard, then you can go ahead and skip this step. I like to have all my keys lit so that I know where the keys are on my keyboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click these three dots for the spectrum cycling and I'm going to change that to a static layer. And with this new static layer selected, I'm just going to select all of my lighting zones that are available to me. So on every device that I have, and I like to go with a white, just a really dark white light. Okay. So it's just turned down a, a lot. Now, in Razer Snap Studio, this is going to show up as being very, very dark, almost like there's no effect on there. You don't even see any white light. However, in real life, there is quite a bit of white light that's going on on your keyboard. Okay, now that we have that done, we're gonna start working on our rainbow falling pattern. So we're gonna add another effect to this design and we're gonna click the wave layer down here on the bottom left. That's gonna add a wave layer in our effect layer list over here on the left side. And it's always going to add the new layer to the top of your list. And the order of this list is very important. The higher the effect is on this list, the higher priority that it takes uh, visually on your keyboard. So we're going to start off with this wave layer selected. And I'm just going to click over here in this gray area and I'm going to hold control and I'm gonna scroll wheel in a couple of times just to focus on our keyboard here and get that in the center of our screen. So making sure this wave layer is selected, we're going to select all of our available lighting options that is on our keys of our keyboard. We're gonna click on our color dropdown and I'm gonna choose this five node pattern right here. It's got the yellow and green and black. I'm gonna click on that. And for right now, I'm just going to click off of this little pop-up window that pops here onto the right panel, and it'll go to our properties of our wave effect. I'm going to change my angle downward at 180 degrees. This will make our angle straight down. I'm going to change our width to 400%, and I'm also going to up our speed to 20. Everything else in here can stay exactly the same, and we're going to hit save. Now we're going to click on our color drop down here, and this is where the majority of your customization comes into play. 
for this first node right here, we're going to make this an invisible node so that it's transparent. So we're going to make sure that node is selected and we're going to click on this transparent color. We're also going to make every other node on this pattern transparent as well. So we'll make this one transparent. We're going to make this transparent and these last two transparent. We're going to click on this first node and we're going to hit the addition symbol. It's going to add a new node between these two nodes right here. We're going to click on this node and we're going to drag it all the way over to this right node right here. And we're going to make this first node red. So that looks good right there. We're going to do the same thing right here. Click on this, this node right here in the middle and we're going to click the addition symbol. We're going to take this new node that just popped up and we're going to drag it over to the right and we're going to make this node blue. Okay, so now it kind of looks like we have just a straight downward pattern of just blue and red. And this right here kind of sets the tone for the whole entire pattern, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to go vertical line by vertical line and we're going to change each vertical line. We're going to change the, the color that's on these lines and we're also going to change the location of where these nodes are to add some random pattern on your rainbow fall effect. So we're going to leave this first row alone here and I'm going to select a second vertical line next to it. So I'm going to hold control and I'm going to select another vertical row of keys. So in this scenario, I'm going to go with these keys. I'm going to click on the color drop down and I'm first going to delete this very last node because we don't need this node. It's not doing anything. So we're just mainly going to work with these six nodes right here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag all of these nodes over here to the right. And I'm going to try and do it as equidistant as it originally existed, existed. And I'm just dragging these over a little bit. So just like this, we got that dragged over. Now we're going to click on this first color node that's red and we're going to change this to any color we want here. So I'm going to go with green on there and then I'm going to ch change this blue one as well. I'll change it to yellow. So you can see the second row here is quite a bit different from this first row. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to select this one key here and I'm going to hit the delete button. That key is not going to be a part of our design just because it makes the vertical effect a little bit clunky. So going on with our third row now, we're going to hold control and we're going to select a third vertical line here. Just like that. Click on our color drop down and once again, we're going to change these around a little bit. We're going to move this maybe halfway, maybe not move it all the way over. Move this over, move that over. Same thing here, move it halfway. Move that, move that. And we can delete that last node too if we want to. So here we moved it a little bit, not the same as we did the second line. And you can see where the light patterns fall on all three of these rows. They're all kind of different, okay? And that's what you want. You want a random pattern moving. So just like with the second row, we're gonna select some random colors here. I'm gonna go with this cyan color and I'm gonna replace this blue with pink. And we're just gonna slowly do this all the way across the keyboard until we get a random pattern. And you also wanna be mindful of the colors that you're choosing because you don't want the same color to be in this row that is in other rows around it. So just go ahead and continue what I'm doing here with random colors and randomly changing your color nodes to add a, add a randomness to the overall effect. And I'll show you what it looks like when you get to the end of the keyboard. All right, so I just finished getting all the way across my keyboard. And as you can see, there's a random rainbow pattern that is going down my keyboard. And I'm gonna quickly go over all of my vertical lines. So this first line, you can see I have some red and some blue up here. And notice the position that they're in right here. Go to the next vertical line by double clicking. You can select all the vertical keys that have that effect. You can see my positioning changed quite a bit. And here I go green, yellow. Next row, I go with these set of keys right here. And you can see that's a bit different as well. You got some cyan and some pink. I chose these for my fourth row. I went with some yellow and orange. 
These are the keys from my next row. I got some light blue, some red. I chose these for my next row, green and yellow. These keys, orange and blue. These keys, I went with yellow and green. These keys right here, I went with some blue and pink. These keys, I went with some pink and orange. These keys, I went with some light blue and green. And for this row of keys, you have some wide keys in there, so I made sure to include um, some additional keys here just to kind of make it look uniform there. And I went with red and yellow on that one. I chose this vertical line here for blue and green, this vertical line for red and orange, this one for orange and blue. I chose this lower portion of the keys and I left the uh, media keys here for my middle row here. But uh, yellow and pink on these keys and with the media keys in this middle column here, I went with some green and blue. Go Hawks. For this row of keys right here, I went with some green and purple. And this row I went with some blue and yellow. So now that we have our main keys done, I'm gonna do some of my outside lighting here. Uh, for my outside lighting zones, I'm going to select what I did on the edges of my keyboard and I'm going to paste that on my left side. So, so I have this effect on my whole left side of my keyboard and it kind of, and it looks really clean because you get that underglow that kind of goes along with the visual of the left side keys. Same thing on the right side. I'm gonna copy by hitting Control C, paste that effect on the outside keys right there. All right. Now with my other lighting zones that are underneath in here, I'm going to basically allow some of these vertical lines to continue down. So with this, with these two right here, I'm gonna take this key, Control C to copy, and I'm gonna paste that effect in there. I'm gonna take this vertical row, Control C, Control V to paste that in there. Control C on that. Control V to paste. I'm gonna take this one, copy, paste. Copy, paste. Copy, paste. And you're just gonna do that as you go here all the way down. And that looks good right there. I'm gonna hit save. So now you can see I have that rainbow pattern on all of my keyboard lighting zones that are available. For the next effect layer on this keyboard, I'm going to be adding a ripple effect. So go ahead and click on that ripple effect layer. That'll add the ripple effect to the top of your effect layer list. With this new layer selected, we're gonna select all of our lighting zones that are on our keyboard. And you can include the outside lighting as well if you want, make it your preference. Real quick, before we get into the color, we're gonna mess with our properties here a little bit. We're gonna keep our speed at 10, but we're gonna change our width to 100%. Now I always, on my ripple effect, I always change my playback to on selected keys. What this is going to do is it will only ripple when you select the keys that are on your keyboard. That way you're not getting ripple effects across your keyboard from your mouse clicks. So on selected keys, so it looks like a random bug just popped up in Synapse. For some reason, I have a green and purple wave pattern going on in the background for no reason. You can see I have my wave layers here. I only have one wave layer on this, this effect. And you have my vertical columns going for my wave effect. And there's also, for some reason, a green and purple wave effect that is also going on on the same keys. So it kind of looks like I found a bug. Sometimes stuff like this happens. Literally, I'll just save and I'll close Synapse. I'll click on my desktop here in my system tray, right click, exit all apps for Synapse open Synapse again. And once Synapse opens, when you go to Studio, 
even after I hit save, you can see that green and purple pattern is not there. I don't know why sometimes Synapse is a little bit buggy, but don't get too concerned when you see stuff like that. If you know you didn't do anything like that, it's obviously not your fault. Sometimes the software is buggy. You just got to close it from your system tray and reopen it again. Okay, so now with this ripple effect, we're going to double click. These, are, This is our ripple effect right here. You can see my properties. With, with at 100, my start is on selected keys, and it's going to end after it ripples just one time. We're going to go with these settings right here. And now we're going to click on our color drop down, and we're going to stick with this rainbow pattern. But if we want to be able to see this rainbow pattern in our ripple effect, I've realized that you have to drag all of these nodes all the way over to the left. You gotta just smash them all in here on the left side, okay? Smash them all over here on the left side, and we're gonna hit save. So now you can see when I click a key, like clicking S, it does a rainbow ripple effect that is all over the keyboard. All right, and last but not least for this effect, I am going to add a reactive layer. So we're gonna click that reactive effect, add that to the top of our list. With this reactive, I'm going to select all of our key options on here. We're gonna click on our color dropdown and I'm just gonna choose this red color. And the reason I choose this red color, uh, I'm also gonna change my properties to fast, okay? All right, hit save. And the reason I'm going with red is because on my ripple effect, the key that I'm pressing ripples red. Whatever key I'm pressing ripples red. And the reactive just allows your key that you pressed to stay red for a little bit longer. So you can see the keys that I'm pressing, they're red and they stay red a little bit longer if you throw a reactive on it. So that is all I did for the keyboard portion of this design. If you have other devices, we're gonna go ahead and hold control and start to scroll wheel out. Hold control and press the number zero. That'll center all of your devices on your window. And now we're going to do a whole lot of copy and paste, all right? And we're gonna change up some codes. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to transfer this rainbow effect lighting to my mouse pad and my mouse and you guys will get the hint you just do the same thing for all of your other devices you just gotta go and select those devices that you want to customize so i'm going to zoom back in here on my mouse and my keyboard and i'm going to start transferring these designs so when I do this, I always change the code, the hex code value of one of my color nodes. Otherwise it can mess with your original pattern. So to transfer this rainbow effect that we got going on, we're gonna click on our wave layer, make sure that's selected. I'm gonna copy what I did on this left side, control C there, and I'm just gonna paste that on the left side of my mouse pad as well. And I'm always going to go into my color dropdown Here's another bug that I found in Snaps. When you copy an effect and paste it into a new lighting zone like this, for some reason it grays out your width percentage and it grays out your speed and sometimes it won't let you change your color nodes as well. So what I've found to work for me is that I have to paste it multiple times. So if I hit paste again, you can see it fills in my information. And sometimes I even have to paste it in a third time to be able to change any effect colors that I might have changed prior. So if you're having issues with that as well, you're welcome. Take the effect that I did on the right side of my keyboard, copy that, and paste that over here. So with these zones highlighted, I'm going to click on my drop down and I'm just going to click on one of these two colors, it doesn't matter which one, and I'm gonna change the last digit of the hex value by one. And the reason I do that is to make this effect 
unique in compared to this one over here. So you can see if I double click on this, it's not gonna highlight these effects over here. And I do this because it can mess with your overall pattern depending on how far spread out this effect is. For example, you can see how fast this red and blue effect is going here, right? You can see how quickly it's going. If I were to copy this and paste that up here, way up here on my window, if I were to paste that up there, you can see how much slower and how much more area the color picks up. Now if I delete this, you'll see, watch the change. You can see the red basically takes up the full size of the keyboard here. If I delete this off of there, watch the difference. You see how that takes up a much smaller area. So adding this effect to other devices will mess with your original effect if you don't change the hex code. You gotta make this hex code unique from every other device. So continuing on with our mouse pad, we're gonna take the right side of our keyboard, copy that, paste it in and on the right side of our mouse, change our hex code, change the last digit by one value, and we're moving on. So click any random vertical effect that you have in here, copy that, and you can paste that in the next one over, paste that in there, click on our color drop down and you can change the color node. You don't even have to change the color node, you just have to make it a little bit different. You can even grab a node and move it slightly and it'll make it unique from the other one. So you can see I double click on this. This is the only effect that that has, all right? So once again, copy, paste, and changing a color node. Copying another one and I'm gonna paste it on the left side of my mouse here. I'll copy another one and I'll paste it on the middle of my mouse and I'm actually going to paste it along with these other lighting zones here. going to copy another one and I'll paste it on the right side of my mouse along with these other lighting zones here. And don't forget to change your hex code value. So here you can see how I've basically transferred the effect from my keyboard over to another device in this case, my mouse pad and my Basilisk Ultimate Razor Mouse. Once you do this and apply this to all of your devices, you'll have a rainbow fall design going across your whole entire PC setup. That is gonna do it for this tutorial. Here is the showcase showing you guys what this profile looks like on the keyboard itself. That's gonna do it for this video guys if you guys enjoyed this content and you guys like learning how to make razor keyboard lighting designs or you just like having razor chroma profiles to download for free then don't forget to hit that subscribe button because i'm going to be uploading a lot more razor chroma profiles in the future also if you have a really good idea for a razor chroma keyboard lighting design then please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below and tell me what you guys would like to see on a razor chroma keyboard but that's gonna do it for this video thank you guys so so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.